Okay, so this is just going to be a kin tier list for the ones that are currently in the Dragon Bane rulebook. I won't be going through the bestiary in this one. I like to keep this one nice, short, and sweet for the majority of characters that you're going to create in this game. So this one's just going to be covering the dwarf, elf, halfling, human, mallard, and wolfkin. So we'll start out from the top. Just so you guys know, the innate abilities for all the kin in Dragon Bane are actually not doing a whole, whole huge amount of heavy lifting with some pretty rare exceptions. Uh, starting out with the Dwarf, unfortunately, they are not one of these rare exceptions. I think that the Dwarf are, at the very best, maybe top of B, very low A. Their unforgiving feature just feels a little bit too odd to really trigger most of the time pretty reliably. So, Willpower Points 3 for Unforgiving. You can activate this ability when attacking someone who harmed you in the past at least one point of damage and get a boon to the roll. It does not matter when the damage was inflicted. It may be wise to write down the names of everyone who harms you so you don't forget them. Three willpower points to get a boon on an attack roll whenever there's just other kin abilities that are easier to trigger than this and don't rely on the first instance of damage taken. And I feel like there's other kin that just get better abilities than this. Uh, it, like Dwarf just getting this while Mallard is getting their ill-tempered or Wolfkin is getting their hunting instincts just doesn't really seem like it's going to stack up. It's kind of fun and thematic, but generally this dwarf is not doing super great. Um, they did get, I might call it a nerf. Um, it is definitely a retooling or a, a different mechanic from what they had in Forbidden Lands. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't carry that over here necessarily. Maybe they just wanted to do something new. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, unfortunately, dwarf just aren't sitting really super, super great. All right, Elf. Elf is objectively the strongest kin in the entire game. Their inner peace ability, it's very similar to what they had in Forbidden Lands, but I believe it's slightly tweaked. I need to look at it again. But with inner peace, this is zero willpower points. As an Elf, you can meditate deeply during a stretch rest. You heal an additional D6 hit points and an, a D6 extra willpower points and can recover from an additional condition. You are completely unresponsive during your meditation and cannot be awakened. So once every six hours, you, one of these stretch rests that you're going to be doing, you're going to get an additional D6 hit points and D6 willpower points. This is good for literally every single profession, just about every single uh, heroic ability that you're going to get. Anything that you're going to be doing in this game is going to be made better by this feature right here. Inner Peace is remarkably good um, compared to everything else. I, I, I Wow. Um, Elf is insanely strong. Um, from what I've heard, Free League are huge, huge, huge elf fans, and they know that they're going to favor them really hard, so they definitely did here. Halfling, I'm pretty sure Halfling is going to be up here near the top of A. Their hard-to-catch ability is pretty reliable. Willpower points, three. You can activate this ability when dodging an attack, getting a boon to the evade roll. Straight up, just getting a boon to a roll to completely negate the damage is significant. Now, you might be thinking that this is going to synergize really well with fast footwork uh, so that you can get another dodge attempt. Unfortunately, fast footwork is going to require three willpower points, and this halfling's ability is also going to require three willpower points. Um, I think, to me, I, I do think that fast footwork is actually a little bit better. Being able to dodge twice during a round is not bad at all. It's a very simple ability that doesn't have to say a whole lot to do a whole lot. There may be certain builds in which this isn't incredibly great, like maybe if you go knight or something like that, but just in general, halfling for the builds that they know that they're going to go down, this is going to be very, very good, and the kind of thing that you know is going to push you down certain paths. All right, so human's going to be a little bit tricky. I personally think that they're down here in C. I don't really see much value in their adaptive feature, um, especially if you're doing solo play. This is just nothing burger. Um, this adaptive feature right here, three willpower points, whenever you're rolling for a skill, you can choose to make the roll using another skill of your choice. You must be able to justify how you use the selected skill instead of the normal one. The GM has the final word, but should be lenient. The thing that makes me think that this isn't super bad is that this is exactly what human got in Forbidden Lands, and Forbidden Lands has been out for quite a while, and they never tweaked it. So... I don't know if they just decided, yes, this is absolutely what we're doing with human, and maybe it did get good feedback, but to me, this is the kind of thing that most GMs are most likely going to just allow to happen if the flexibility is there. The interesting thing is, though, there's some mechanics that are pretty hard-coded in with Dragonbane, so 
maybe it's more powerful in that you're saying that they can use this alternate ability to do this same skill, in which case maybe that's kind of cool. I, I don't know. Um, that is going to have to... I'm going to have to spend some time with that one, really. Uh, but as a designer, at least for my first blush with it, this one feels kind of meh in practical play. I don't know. Three willpower points seems incredibly expensive. Maybe if that got reduced down to one, then I'd be like, okay, this is kind of cool. Or even if it was just a passive, maybe then. But maybe I'll also hear something from the guys of Free League about how this is actually just absurdly good. But as of right now, my first opinion is that they're definitely going to be down here in C. All right, you mallards. Mallards are going up in S, but they are definitely still below the elf. Uh, I'll kind of talk about why. So with mallard, they're getting the ill-tempered ability and webbed feet. Uh, they're the only kin that's getting two, but webbed feet is going to feel a little bit more situational and not quite as useful until I kind of talk about why on certain builds it's quite good. So with ill-tempered, three willpower points, mallards tend to have a choleric temper. You can activate this ability, no action, when making a skill roll and get a boon to the roll. You also become angry if you're not already, so you do take a condition here. This ability cannot be used for rolls against intelligence or intelligence-based skills. So, if you're already angry, you're not taking on any other detriment by doing this right here. And then notice that this is any skill roll, it's not specifically an attack, right? So, as long as it's not an intelligence-based skill, you're doing pretty well with this just being able to get a boon for three willpower points. This works for attacks. This is the way that you're going to go Berserker Barbarian in this game right here. This opens up a certain build that only the Mallard kind of gets to, at least a certain feel to your character, right? So Mallard getting ill-tempered is already really quite good. And then Webbed Feet, the fact that they're featuring you in heavy armor in the, the core rulebook is no mistake. Uh, with Webbed Feet, zero willpower points right here. This is just a passive for you. Passive innate abilities are usually a lot better than those that cost anything because, of course, as a mallard, you get a boon to all swimming rolls. You always move at full speed in or underwater. You are overcoming the biggest environmental danger to wearing heavy armor with this. So they're pushing you and pushing you in towards wearing heavy armor. Mallard Knight is looking quite good, it turns out. Uh, this is probably the scariest thing from the environment for why you would not choose to wear heavy armor. In this game, it is a little bit more hard-coded than something like 5e. So this is actually a nice little oomph, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, if you don't go and get your, your swimming training or whatever, this is still here to give you that little oomph instead, right? Um, in general, these two features, the ill-tempered one is enough that I would say that they were at least at the top of A. The fact that they're getting web feet on here as well is just a nice little oomph on top of that. Um, Ill-tempered, I think, is objectively better than dwarf, it turns out. And it's more useful than something like, I think, halfling specific to evade, right? This is going to get you a boon to an evade roll, but then you become angry. Yeah, it, it, this is... Uh, Mallard's very, very good, guys. Okay, and then Wolfkin. Uh, think Hunter's Mark the entire time that we're talking about this. So I think Wolfkin is actually, I may have put Halfling up above them earlier. Um, I think that they're probably tied right in here. Wolfkin is very, very good with their hunting instincts feature. This is straight up from Forbidden Lands, but we'll talk about it here. Three willpower points. You can use this ability to designate a creature in sight or a creature you can catch the scent of as your prey. This counts as an action in combat. You can follow the scent of your prey for a full day, and you can spend one further willpower point, not an action, to gain a boon for an attack against your prey. So, the setup here is three willpower points if you can, you know, catch their scent, or you can actually see them. Once you do, the boons on attack rolls afterwards are only going to be one further willpower point, right? I am not entirely sure... Again, why Dwarf is getting the three willpower points per boon on the uh, boon on the roll. And then Wolfkin is able to do the three and then one continuous, right? It's immediately better on the Wolfkin within two turns that you're doing this. Like two attacks, this is already way more efficient than what the Dwarf is getting. Uh, by the time that you get the third attack off, it's just objectively better. Uh, Wolfkin is quite good at least for the offensive role right here a built-in hunter's mark on a kin is going to be great for just about every build except for i guess specifically mage here but yeah 
Uh, that's going to be it on this one. Let me know what you all think down in the comment section below. Subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. You know what to do. Thank you so much to my Patreon sponsors for helping me keep the lights on around here and coffee and my blood. You all are absolute heroes. If you guys want to see more Dragon Bane coverage, do all the YouTube things. Like, comment, subscribe, all that. Go check out the Dragon Bane Quick Start. This is a super cool game. Just want to talk about this a bit more like we talk about other games too. So, ha! Figured this would be fun. Anyways, guys. That's going to be it for this one. I hope you all are staying safe, staying healthy, and I will see you in the next one.